hiding. <laughs> From Hollywood, the Raleigh Cigarette Program, starring Red Skelton, with Ozzy Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, and Wonderful Smith. <laughs> So much ice cream today. <laughs> oh, this is our three piece orchestra. Vienna, stool, the guy Orchestra playing Hallelujah. And now we bring you Metro Golden Mayor's newest young comedian, the star of our show, Red Skelton. Thank you very much. That was uh, Ozzy Nelson and his orchestra. Oh, that's yours, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> well, thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hiya, Truman. Say, hasn't the, uh, hasn't the weather been cold lately? Huh? Boy, I'll say it's been cold. You know, last night it was so cold that I had to get up and let the cat in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Red, this cold weather makes you feel good, though. I don't know about that. It's pretty cold this afternoon out in the Hollywood Bowl. Now, wait a minute, Red. There's nothing at the Hollywood Bowl now. Don't give me that stuff. My girl knows what she's doing. <laughs> I see. Well, anyway, doesn't this weather affect the fruit here in California? Yeah, I'll say it does, Brad. They're calling it unkissed now. <laughs> say, tell me something. How does the Chamber of Commerce feel about this cold weather, I wonder? Well, I saw a member of the Chamber of Commerce uh, last week, and he said he was as warm as toast. He did? Yeah, but of course he had his feet in a toaster at the time. <laughs> yeah, it sure is cold. Yeah, instead of drive-ins, they're calling them slide-ins now. <laughs> No matter how cold it gets, Red, people out here still wear thin clothes. Yeah, and I got... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of my family are out of work, too. <laughs> I was out of work once. <laughs> you were, Ozzy? Yeah, and it was very confusing. I never learned a trade, so I didn't know what kind of work I was out of. <laughs> Hiya, Red. Hiya, Harriet. Are you cold? Yep, and sending me candy won't do any good. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking about the weather. Everybody talks about the weather, but nobody does anything about it. Who said that? <laughs> Mark Twain. Mark Twain? Yeah, that's right. I can't afford live writers. <laughs> you want to get rid of that one, too. <laughs> Say, you know, it's really cold, though, especially when you have to get up for that daylight saving time. Yeah, imagine saving time. Yeah. I saved some time once. <laughs> In fact, I save time all the time. How? Oh. Well, I ask them if they neck before I take them out. <laughs> is Ozzy kidding, Harriet? Well, if he isn't, somebody ought to watch and make sure he doesn't get a hold of anything sharp. <laughs> well, say, Red, I'm still struggling with this new day that daylight saving Jane, time. Yeah, I can. Shall I go over? <laughs> I'm still struggling with this new daylight savings time, too. Tell me, did you remember to set your clock ahead? Yeah, I set my clock ahead all right, but I'm having a tough time setting myself ahead. My stomach's been grumbling all week. <laughs> hey, did you hear what happened? They forgot to change the clocks at Camp Roberts. No, what happened? Well, the bugler overslept and it was the first time the Army had breakfast in bed. <laughs> The government says by setting the time ahead, we'll save 500,000 kilowatt hours of electricity. Yeah. Well, all I know is today when I got my bill, it was up 60 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Harriet, did you have any trouble with the new time? Oh, no. Except I sprained my arm setting the clock. That's ridiculous. How could you sprain, sprain your arm setting a clock? Well, I have a concrete sundial. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, Red, this new time has confused me. Well, how do you mean? Well, I usually listen to the early morning exercises on the radio, and when I tuned in the other day, I got Prudence Penny instead. Well, what's so bad about that? Did you ever try deep knee bending while sifting flour? <laughs> you know, I like, I like the new time, though. It means another hour of sunshine. Just think, another hour of sunshine for California. Altogether, that makes one. <laughs> You know, I've been wondering, Red, just what does this daylight saving time mean anyway? Well, it means let's figure out what time it is in Chicago and go nuts. <laughs> I almost went nuts once. <laughs> 
You did, Ozzy? How was that? Well, I still haven't figured out whether to put the clock forward or backward. Well, that depends on whether you're coming or going. <laughs> I haven't figured that out yet either. <laughs> You know, my objection to daylight savings is that I don't know when to get up in the morning. Well, that's easy, Truman. You just look outside, and if it's darker than it was when you went to bed, it's time to get up. (laughs) See, for a whole week, I've been so sleepy in the mornings that my eyes had to open me. (laughs) I wish they'd hurry up about it. (laughs) Well, it'll do people good to get up earlier and start squeezing their orange juice. Yeah, but think about the chickens. They got to start squeezing early, too. I laid a big egg once. <laughs> Say, uh, what yeah, happened, we, Ozzie? Well, it was at a party, and they laughed when I sat down at the piano. Yeah, what's the matter? No talent? No stool. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, a farmer is the guy who don't like the daylight saving. It throws everything out of whack, while a rooster nowadays is so confused, they don't even crow anymore. They just sit down and shrud. <laughs> <laughs> shrug. Is it really as shrug. bad as that, Red? Yeah, the words are pretty bad. You sure? The one farmer said he's clock ba- said he's clock back instead of forward. What happened? Well, the cow was right on schedule, but he was caught without his tails down. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Red, do you know what this longer day is going to mean to California motorists? Yeah, an extra hour to run down pedestrians. <laughs> Well, one good thing happened. There's been no accidents on Hollywood Boulevard since the new time started. Well, that's only natural, Harriet. The drivers are too sleepy. They can't open their eyes to aim. Tell me the name of it, dedicated to uh, our guest, the 143rd Field Artillery, along with the other boys throughout the country. Tonight, we're going to show different things that happen in army camps. To start off with, we have uh, the boys who receive things from home. Wonderful Smith, a private, is walking by, uh, walking by Sergeant Deadeye. Hey, you. You getting ready to give me a hot foot? No, sir, Sergeant Dead. I was just striking a match on the sole of his shoe. Is that all? All right, so I soaked it in gasoline first. <laughs> Boy, what a night. What happened last night, Sergeant Dead? I? Well, I went to town on a furlough. And I had a couple of beers, and then I met some Marines. And I had a few Marines, and then I went back in with some more beer. <laughs> Sir. Well, sir, I came running out of that bar, leaped about six feet in the air, and it's flat on my back. What'd you do that for? I could have swore I seen my horse standing there. <laughs> so you were supposed to be in the camp last night at 11 o'clock, weren't you, huh? And you were out with a girl. How'd that happen? Huh? How did it happen? Well, I was standing on the corner, minding my own business, when all of a sudden, this gal walks by and started to flirt with me. She flirts with you? Yeah. She wanked, then dropped her bottle of gin. (laughs) A bee girl. Sure she be girl. What you think? Look. (laughs) That bee egg, too. (laughs) Uh, Look what I got in the mail, though. She sent me a picture of herself. Keep with me. Here, take a look at it. It's upside down. Well, turn it round. Okay. Nope, I'm wrong. Now it's upside down. (laughs) Uh, That's what she gets for having an hourglass figure. Mm. Ain't she got deep dimples, though? Yes, ain't it but the deepest dimples I've ever seen. Yep, you can see the moon shining right through the chinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she sure is a pretty gal, though. She looks like a cover gal. Cover gal? You mean like Jinx Falkenberg? No, sir, I mean like Martha Washington. Yeah. <laughs> well, look what's coming. Private Reuben. Hey, Reuben, where have you been? Ah, uh, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> You're talking to a sergeant there, fella. 
Well, how do you know what I am? You didn't come in a private, did you? Yeah. Where you from? What do you mean, where I'm from? What do you care where I'm from? I ain't in this for nothing. I want to get a commission. What are you, a straight salary? <laughs> <laughs> where were you transferred from? From the Benet Brett. <laughs> what do you want to ask me? <laughs> Say, what are your duties around this camp? I'm the guy who wakes up the bugler every morning. Oh, yeah? Well, who wakes you up? Everybody. My bed is in front of the washroom door. <laughs> Say, Reuben, you're supposed to be with a mechanized division. Can you take a motor apart? Yeah, better than that. I once took the Chattanooga Choo Choo apart. You took the Chattanooga Choo Choo apart? Did you get it together again? I say, did you get it together again? Answer me. Well, if you want to go anywhere, you better take the Glendale bus. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, well, it's just about time for inspection. Private Wonderful, stick out your chest. Pull in your stomach. I can't, sir. I can't, sir. What's the matter? It's the pants, huh? <laughs> pull in your stomach, will you? I can't, sir. These pants. Yeah, pull it in. But, sir. Yes, sir. Mighty pretty shorts you're wearing there, partner. <laughs> Say, uh, do your feet hurt you? No, sir. Then why'd you cut the toes out of your shoes? I didn't. I spilled a cup of GI coffee on my foot. <laughs> All right, now we'll have a little exercise. Right leg up, right leg down. Left leg up, left leg down. Right leg up, left leg up. <laughs> If I wasn't a sergeant, I'd have swore I made a mistake. <laughs> oh, sergeant, I'm sorry I'm late. Well, Private Nelson, where you been? Well, my grandmother came to see me, and I just had to say goodbye. You know, my poor old white-haired grandmother? Yeah. <laughs> well, wipe the lipstick off and get in line. <laughs> Hey, Private Nelson, how do you like being under a first-rate top sergeant, huh? Oh, it's swell. But I like it here, too. Yeah. <laughs> now, men, I need a volunteer. I want somebody to handle that rubbish and that trash back here. Is that a new maneuver? Quiet, fella. <laughs> now, I want a volunteer to carry out that trash. Now, those interested, uh, step forward. What do you like that? <laughs> Everybody step forward except me. Wonderful, you take over that duty at three o'clock. But, sir, I didn't volunteer. Now, look, bub, you better change your mind or I'll tell the general you're a Marine. Now, uh, you never will make a good soldier. Well, I'd have you know I'm coming from a fa fighting family, sir. My ancestors were minute men. Mm. Why, they all wore three-cornered hats. Well, judging from you, they all had just the heads for them. Yeah. <laughs> Now, another thing, Smith, before you go on sentry duty tonight, I want you to turn my bed down. This is a two-man army. MacArthur and me doing all the work. <laughs> now, quiet, or I'll take you outside and run your feet off. <laughs> the uh, company dismissed. Uh, pardon me, sir. What'd Here's you do? a package that just came for Private Wonderful Smith. <laughs> Oh, boy, that's from home. What's that package? It has a grease spots on it. That means food or grease. Yeah. Look at that. Mm. A nice chocolate cake. Mm. My mom made it all with her little hands. She sure did. Here's a thumb that she overlooked. <laughs> Gee, she must have hit the numbers again. Man, just look at that chicken wing. Man, just look at that skin. Say, uh, wonderful old pal, old buddy. Uh, let me carry the rest of that stuff over to your cot, huh? It ain't heavy. Uh, you know, old pal, old buddy, I can put somebody else on that trash detail, you know. No, it served me right. I deserve to be punished. I'll let you drive my Jeep. I don't know how to drive. And besides, I ain't got no license. Well, 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 a brother Californian. <laughs> Look, if you let me in on some of that food, I'll even cut you, let you take first crack at my Esquire with the scissors. Nope. 
Yeah. Now listen, you half-baked lug. You give me some of that homemade cooking or I'll beat you over the head with your head. Pardon me, sir. Uh, a message. Yes. Lana Turner's giving a dinner and she wants six men to come over. Would any of you... Gosh, Sarge, why did they get so excited about Lana Turner, huh? I don't know. I guess she's a good cook. <laughs> a visiting day at the camp. And driving up to the entrance, we find a lady and her little boy. So, uh... So, Harriet, you be my mother, and I'll be the mean little meanie. Huh? What's the big idea of blowing that bugle at six o'clock in the morning, huh? It's because my drum is busted. <laughs> Besides, I had to told you, Mommy. You see all the stripes on my arm? You'll have stripes somewhere else if you aren't careful. Oh, now, come, come, Mommy. This is no time to start playing 20 mule team. <laughs> well, I'll forgive you this time. Did you sleep well last night? No, all night long. I was dreaming about Hedy Lamar, Lana Turner, Rita Hayworth, and Sher- Sherman Sheridan. <laughs> I don't know any of these people. I'm new out here. <laughs> and Sheridan, Donald Duck. Donald Duck? Yeah, you know, the government man. <laughs> well, I don't see how you could dream about all those beautiful glamour girls and Donald Duck, too. Neither do I. I got that food I had a mental cake. <laughs> oh, Junior, at times I wish we hadn't kept your incubator so warm. Yeah. <laughs> Would I need to be the baby, Mummy? Yes, why? Too bad I never hatched Aunt Mom. <laughs> it certainly is. Hey, Mommy, where's my BB gun? I want to play soldier. Oh, that darn BB gun. I'm sorry I bought it for you. Did you really tell you bought my BB gun, Mommy? Yes, I am. I'll bet the streetlight people are sorrier. <laughs> We were having too many blackouts lately. <laughs> hey, watch me play Toto, Mommy. Watch me go over the top. Junior, you stop climbing over the seats of the car. Oh, Junior, you make me tired. Always playing soldier. Yeah, I'd make you a lot tired if I was playing sailor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, you don't know the first thing about the Army. I do, too. Oh, you do. Well, we'll see. What do you know about uh, Fort Sheridan? Fort Sheridan? Yes, Why? Well, I knew she had them, but I didn't think they'd have to build a fort around her. <laughs> oh, Junior, I'm talking about an army camp. Oh. I'll try again. What does KP mean? Oh, that's easy. That means keep them peeling. <laughs> You're as impossible as your father. Yeah. Hey, Mom, was Papa in the last war? Hmm? Yes, he was. He, he was attached to a French 75. He was attached to a French 75? Well, yes. What's wrong with that? Nothing. He liked him much younger now, though, don't he? Well, here we are at the army camp. Now, try and be good, will you? Are you going to be good? Oh, wouldn't you like... Oh, no. Look, Junior, there's the guard. Oh, who goes there? Nobody. We stop. <laughs> And give the countersign. Boo. Oh, Junior, behave. A sentry, my uncle is Major Gudmundson. Don't let her kid you, Bob. We're Jap. Junior! <laughs> we your it, and to prove it, I will nip his knee. <laughs> Junior, put those fangs back in your mouth. <laughs> Oh, yes, I know you now. The Major left a pass for you. Uh, proceed with caution. Okay, okay. Hey, mister, ain't you supposed to have a bayonet on that gun? Why, sure, it's right here. All right, put it back! Don't you hit me. <laughs> Don't you dare hit him. You let me do it. I know his weaknesses. Yeah. Look at that jeep go! <laughs> Hey, Mummy, and a dangerous to drive too fast, he might hit a soldier. <laughs> Nonsense. Why, these drivers are the best in California. Hey, 22. <laughs> Look, 
Junior, there's headquarters ahead. Hey, what did bowling with all the bar, darn it? <coughs> now I know why you brought me up here. This ain't no army camp, it's a reform school. You've sold me up the river. You double caught me. That is the dirtiest trick to Junior, ever do. this is an army camp. <laughs> Can't you see the hostesses? You double. So it's pretty, ain't it, Ma? <laughs> oh, Junior. Look at the big guns over there, Mommy. Oh, yes, look at them. Yeah, you know, when I see big guns like that, it makes me wonder. Makes you wonder what? Why I waste my time with spitballs. (laughs) Here's headquarters, Junior. Now, don't lean out the window too far. I'm going to stop. Okay. (laughs) Now, what did you have to top those wicks for? (laughs) I fell out on me well ahead. Oh, it didn't hurt you. You fell in that soft mud. Stop mud nothing. Look at the wax floating around there. <laughs> that was my widow head. Listen, Gooey, you did that on purpose. Oh, oh, oh you broke my widow head. You broke my <laughs> You really broke my widow head. I didn't even touch you. Oh, no? Well, then this place must be haunted because somebody beat me with a brain down. <laughs> What's going on out here? Oh, it's you, Harry. How are you, my dear? Just fine, Uncle. You remember Junior, don't you? Uh, oh, yes. I remember him when he was just a little baby. Yeah. Gosh, he was horrible. Yeah, that, though. You think I was horrible then? You get it over me today. <laughs> hey, Major, you got you fighting pants on? Fighting pants? Well, I guess so, son. This is my uniform. Yeah, they're awful tight, ain't they? <laughs> I bet you if you bend over, you get blitzkrieg. <laughs> You be quiet or you'll be the objective of a pincher's movement. And I do mean pinch. Oh! Hey, Major, can I shoot that big gun you're shooting? Now, Junior, you don't want to shoot my gun, do you? Yes, I do. I shot the cannon in front of the city hall and blew it up. Junior! (laughs) You fired that gun and blew up the city hall? Yeah, I blew up the city hall. Now I know. Now you know what? I know what they mean when they say the old gray mare ain't what you used to be. (laughs) Why do you say things like that? I don't know. I got out your wicket. Shall we, uh... <laughs> Shall we go inside, Harriet? I want you to meet Major Smith, Burnham, Yule, and Du Bois. No, I would stay out here. Oh, no. Uncle Sam has spent too much money building up the morale of the men. I'm not going to let you change it. <laughs> Besides, you might shoot yourself and waste ammunition. Yeah. <laughs> Now, you let me stay out here or I will tell. You'll tell what? I will tell everybody that you used to be a dash hound stretcher in a dog kennel. <laughs> Come on, Harriet. I'm sure Junior will be all right. Yeah, I will be all right. Well, here I am, all alone. <laughs> I think I will look around for some unlocked spare tires. <laughs> no, I better not. They might lock me up for a spy. I know what I do. I will dress up like a German officer and nobody will recognize me. (laughs) Oh, look at that big gun over there. I think I will run over. Hey, boy, get away from that gun. Hey, where do you get that boy top? I had Major Junior. (laughs) You look more like Major Disaster. (laughs) You want to tell them jokes to the Japs and torment them. (laughs) I think there's a little trouble in the front. Now, you go see where it is and you report back to me. What's your regiment? Now, let's not get no debug. <laughs> it's a military secret. Now, you go up to the front and find out what that trouble is, or else. Or else what? Or else I will get nasty. And, brother, if I put my mind to it, I can really get nasty. <laughs> Say, who is you? Uh, Sergeant Pyle. Uh, will you tow me around before you check up at the front? Yes, sir. Okay. Madam Odell, for Mormon, dear boy. <laughs> Madam Odell. Uh, this is one of our new tanks. Gee, look like a big can of coffee, don't it? <laughs> hey, let's look. Let's open it up and look inside, huh? Hmm, <laughs> vacuum pack. <laughs> well, I'll be right back. I've got to get some help. And promise me, you won't go near that gun. I promise you. Uh, your word's good enough for me. I'll go. You don't know me very well, does you? <laughs> oh, look at that little door on that big gun. I think I will open it up. Gee, look at that gun barrel. I wonder if that's big enough to call with. 
Eh, look for the nut to call, eh? <laughs> if I do, I get a whipping. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> I will crawl in the gun barrel and stick me little head out the other end like a gopher. <laughs> Boy, it's your head dark in here. I wonder how the little bullet find their way around. See, it's your head deep, too. Now I know what Danny Claude go through every year. Uh-oh. What happened to that little hole I crawled in? Uh, here, Harry, there's one of the big guns. It's a 14-inch gun. Oh, my. Are you going to use this for gun practice today? Yes, we are. Right now. <laughs> that didn't sound so good. <laughs> Something tells me I got myself on the spot, but good. All right, man. Load the gun. It's loaded, sir. Take your positions. In position, sir. Ready to fire. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't you... That sounds like Junior. Where are you, Junior? You pull that trigger, you find out. <laughs> That gun. I could answer that, but it would only lead to bloodshed. <laughs> Get out of there, you little boy, termite. Boy, boy, boy. boy, I never do that again. Not there, boy. I never do that again. I had a scared little character, I had. Oh, why don't I ship you off to a restricted area? Don't, Mommy. I will be good, Mommy. Don't you, Mommy, me. You're going to get the whipping of your life. Oh, Bend mommy. over. No. Pardon me, Major Junior. I checked up on that trouble at the front. Oh, yeah? Well, you dick around, bub, because you're going to be a little trouble in the rear. No? civilian uh, defense. We have Clem, the fellow from the country, and Clem is on his way to his girl's house to help her with a women's ambulance corps. Well, here I am on my way to the ambulance corps. There is something about a soldier. There's something about a soldier. There's something about a soldier. Do, 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 do. do. <laughs> I I had a girl. <laughs> Come to think of it, I got a girl, Daisy June, and she's the prettiest of them all. Wish I was a smart aleck, I'd ask her to marry me. <laughs> well, looky, there's Daisy June's house now, and there's her old man sitting at the window, waving his teeth. <laughs> I'll knock on the door. Hello! is getting in a rut. <laughs> hey, Gramp, it's me, Clem. I just got in from the stable. So you did, so you did. Yeah. <laughs> what you doing, Grandpa? I'm getting ready for Washington's birthday. I'm soaking up some Mount Vernon. <laughs> hey, Gramp, is Daisy June home? Yes, but you'll have to wait. She's milking the cow. Oh, could I see her? Where's she milking the cow? Where is she milking the cow? Yeah, where? Ain't you never seen a cow? <laughs> hey, Gramp, I want to ask you something. You used to be a soldier, didn't you? Yep, I was an old Indian fighter. Yeah, but I had to quit. You had to quit being an old Indian fighter? Why? Yeah, some of them old Indians turned out to be pretty spry. <laughs> Why? You know I fit in the Indian War. I fit in the Civil War. And I fit in the Spanish-American War. Why? No, no. Take it easy, Gramp, or you'll have another fit. <laughs> why is Hey, the... Gramp, pipe down, will you just a little bit? Yeah, what you want to know? Hey, why are you always sitting in that chair? How come you never get up, huh? 
Do you know how to open a bear trap? Nope. Well, I reckon I'll just keep a setting then. <laughs> Now, what was it you want to know about children, son? Well, I told Daisy June I'd show her uh, and the girls how to drill. No, I don't know anything about it. Well, sir, I'll show you. As soon as I get my leg uncrossed. Mm, push it, son. Help me out here. Mm. <coughs> Feels good. <sighs> it's been that way ever since 1888. <laughs> well, now, I'll give you some practice orders. Tension! Forward march! Oh. Well, what happened? I started off with both feet at once. <laughs> now I'll show you the, uh, how to about face. First put one foot in back of you. You. Then you turn on the ball of the other foot. You. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Bout face. Ooh. Well, what's better? Why didn't you tell me I had to turn my neck, too? <laughs> Straighten up, here comes Daisy June. Is that you, Cam? Well, Daisy June. Is that you, Cam? Yo, what do you think? I thought somebody sent me a comic valentine. <laughs> if I wasn't a moron, I'd, I'd resent that. Oh, uh, you ain't a moron, Clam. Are oh, you ain't? No, but don't you worry. You'll work your way up to it someday. <laughs> She's a mighty pretty gal, Clem. Your grandma looked like you one time. She did? Yeah, just like you. Too bad she had to go and flab up on me. <laughs> well, run along, children. I got to get back to my rucking. 5,208. 5,208. Five thousand and four. You just sit there and count, Stoney. <laughs> Clem, how do you like my women's ambulance corps uniform? It's very pretty, Daisy June. It reminds me of the time when I was a Boy Scout. Were you a Boy Scout, Clem? Well, not exactly, but I know how to make flyers and cook and keep things tidy. You do? Yeah. Now, if I could just find some girl with a job. <laughs> Sometimes when I look at you, I think there's nobody to home. Hmm? I said with you, there's nobody home. Okay, I'll tell him when he comes in. <laughs> oh, say, by the way, Clem, how'd you make out at your draft board? What's your classification? I am 4Z. <laughs> 4Z? What does that mean? I go right after women and children. <laughs> Girls, Clem, look uh, at them. Gosh, gee whiz, just look at them. <laughs> oh, you kid. <laughs> Come on, Clem, take your finger out of your mouth and let's get started. Okay. Friends have arms. <laughs> gosh, <laughs> what long fingernails you girls have got. All right, company attention. You doing anything tonight? I mean, uh, <laughs> forward march. Powder your nose. Girls, girls. Yeah, girls, girls. Clem, don't forget what you're here for. Mm. All right, Clem, show them how to march again. All right, girls, get ready now. Forward, march. Hey, Clem, mm. you better give another command. They're marching right towards the river. Mm -hmm. I said you better tell them to halt. They're marching right towards the river. Okay. Company! Oh. <laughs> it wasn't quick enough for that one girl, was it? <laughs> it's a good thing there's water in that river. She'd have got hurt. Oh, Cam, you don't know a thing about drilling. Well, I was only trying to help. Would you like driving an ambulance? Yeah, beat driving an automobile. When I hit a pedestrian, I could pick up and deliver. <laughs> Well, don't get excited. It's probably around here somewhere. I found it. I think we killed somebody. <laughs> I sure found it, didn't I? 
Yeah, will you help me find my eyebrows now? That's enough, Clem. Look, we need a victim to practice first aid on, yeah. and you're elected. Yeah, sounds like dirty politics to me. Clem, do you want to be the victim? Yep. Yeah. Where do you want me to bleed? Well, that won't be necessary. We're just a practicing. Now stretch out on the ground. Okay, stretch out on the ground? Yes. What are you going to do, kick dirt over me? No, now come on, lie down. Okay. First take off your shirt. Right. Oh, now your jersey. Oh, no. Now your vest. Oh, now your windbreaker. Well, I'll be. I thought I lost that windbreaker last summer. You're supposed to be knocked out. Act knocked out, will you? Well, how do you do that? Oh, now I remember. I have to make sure that there's nothing in your mouth. Stick out your tongue. Uh, further. Uh, further. What do you want me to do, lay it on the floor? Okay, now uh, put it back before it gets cold. Okay. Tickles, don't it? Now, you're supposed to have a broken arm. Here, I'll hit it with a hammer. Oh, wait a minute. You ain't going to break my arm, are you? Clem, if you don't let me, I'll give you back your skate key. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, you think you broke my other arm, too. What makes you think that? It bends both ways. <laughs> well, that's good. You want them to match, don't you? <laughs> well, now we got a real broken arm to practice on. Girls, ain't that just dandy? Yeah. Just say the word, I'll go all out and break a leg, too. <laughs> This is well break it. I ain't going anywhere for a while anyhow. All right, girls, back up the ambulance. We'll put Clem into it. No. Oh! You backed the ambulance right over Clem. <laughs> I'm a gene. You'll lose one of your stripes for this. Clem, are you hurt, Clem? Did the ambulance run over your legs? Answer me, Clem. Did it run over your legs? Clem, answer me! Hand me my mouth and I will. <laughs> I'll be back again next Tuesday at the same time. Red Skelton, Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, Wonderful Smith, and your announcer, Truman Bradley. And now, here's Red Skelton. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's program was dedicated to the boys of every branch of the service and was based on the ideas suggested by them. Our purpose was good, clean fun, so if we've said or done anything to offend anyone, we really didn't mean to. So until next week, this is Red Skelton saying goodbye now. Thanks for listening. Red Skelton is heard on this program through the courtesy of the Metro Golden Mayor Studio. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.